Here is a 2024 Mazda CX-90 PHEV in jet black over a grayish leather interior. 26 miles all electric range. Up to 490 miles is the total range. When you're considering these numbers and we're in premium to luxury comparing to a Volvo or even a Lincoln, it definitely gives some more competition. I'm Anthony from Hawkeye Rides and I'm going to explain the exterior, the engine performance inside and take this for a drive with a light comparison with some pros and cons. And the premium starts off with full LED headlamps and daytime runnings. The grille is going to have the gloss black on all of the PHEVs. The turn signal integrates into the chrome surroundings, the 8.1 inches of clearance. And on the lower, you're going to get the air curtain with the chrome that's going to surround the center trim. Front and rear parking sensors, the preferred will be the eight passenger, the premium will be a seven passenger layout. The Volvo XC90 will have a similar stance to this, and that's why I like this plug-in hybrid as a comparison, because you're saving a ton of money. It's not going to get as much range pure EV, but you're getting a total output of just as much. With a 2.5 liter E Sky Active four cylinder, that will produce 189 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque that will be paired with a PHEV motor that adds 173 horsepower and 191 pound-feet of torque. And that gives us a total output of 323 horsepower with an eight-speed automatic transmission, 56 MPGEs combined. That is great when you're considering a luxury vehicle now you can cruise in this with 26 miles full ev and go if you live in florida from tampa to nearly orlando without using one gallon of gas we have upgraded 21 inch multi-spoke alloy wheels and machine finish it's a two-tone and it makes this look a lot more dynamic when you get this set up. Standard is a 19 inch wheel and charging times a level two or a 240 volt, one and a half to two hours. Volvo, you're talking around five to six hours. A level one charge will take about six hours. This is going to be the fastest comparing to any of the rivals. Even if you were to look at a Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV, this is going to be better in charging and for performance satin chrome for the roof rails around the window trim and on the lower with the Mazda badging. Comparing this against the CX-9, you're not only getting better in your fuel and they don't offer a plug-in hybrid, but the stance to it, it's more elegant. They really put a lot more effort in the sense of trying to give these styling cues in which they didn't have to do that with the CX-90. The way it proportions out because it's wider, it's around 7.5 inches longer, 1.4 inches longer wheelbase. It just has a more dominant stance on all perimeters. Shark fan antenna, lower roof spoiler with the gloss black that's gonna surround it and it drops into a more sleek tail lamp assembly. LED combination setup. The windshield wiper, because of the way the window is more oval and pushed upwards to give coupe style, I'll let it slide for not being underneath there because we are going into premium slash luxury. Towing up to 3,500 pounds, the Lincoln will be the best in class. Chrome on the lower trim, the reflectors will be more or less where the exhaust should be. Standard all-wheel drive, which you're not going to receive that in any of the variants that's comparable. Kick to open or power lift gate. 14.9 cubic feet of storage. A 12 volt will be on the side. And on this side, we have a home plug. Underneath the floor, it gets a little bit of storage. Split fold the rear bench in the back at a 60-40 split, increasing cargo to 40 cubic feet. Fold down the captain seats to increase cargo to 74.2 cubic feet, which is less than Lincoln. The Volvo XC90 recharge. Let's go inside, start up this plug-in hybrid so you can hear that exhaust fan.
10-way power seat adjustment, heated front seats, four-way manual adjustment because this is the premium, otherwise it's manual, ventilated on the premium plus memory for the driver. 39.7 inches of headroom, 41.7 inches of legroom. Because it's a wider vehicle, it gives optimal space for the footwells. It is going to be a little bit less in leg space than the rivals. The dashboard layout is different from CX-9. 10.25 infotainment screen, navigation, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, both are wireless. AM, FM, streaming, Bluetooth audio, HD radio, Sirius XM, put it into reverse. And we have a reverse camera with the lines that do not move. 360 degree cameras on the premium plus. It bulges out into the air vents with the satin aluminum that goes around them and you get the piping that's going to outline the center of the dash. I do like how they integrate into the door panel with the wood interior. It keeps more of a plush look. Upgraded 12.3 gauge cluster that is configurable. When you change the driving modes, it does change the layout. And it can go through an array of information for the driver. Leather wrap, three spoke steering wheel, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, multi-functionality with the paddle shifters, the stocks. Push button start is going to be tucked right there and no more dials to turn the climate control. It's now buttons or toggle switches for the dual climate control setting. QI charger with a 12 volt, the EMI modes, which we've already went through, and the new gear lever with the matte black that's going to surround it, the CX90 key fob. Rotary knob for the infotainment. It's going to be more soft. It opens up as a two tier, and you can see it's not so deep. It is wide with a couple of USB ports. Bose premium sound system, which is a 12 speaker setup, more soft derived. When you get into the premium plus, you'll get the quilted inlays, contrast stitching and piping will be in that. Storage pocket, you can fit maybe one or two beverages with a large pano moonroof that goes to the back seats, edgeless rear view mirror with home link and dimming because we're in the premium. For the second row, 39.3 inches of headroom, 39.4 inches of legroom storage behind both of the front seats, standard third climate control with the air vents, USB ports, fold that up for your cup holders. This is also adjustable because these are captain seats, which means I can recline them just like that. And the nice thing is this adjusts, so it'll adjust to your level in liking. You can also adjust this forward to give more space to the backseat occupants, making it a little bit tight for someone six foot three. Manual sunshades, and the door panel gets the same materials that's found in the front. I like the pattern that goes into the wood. You're getting the soft materials everywhere, one touch up and down for the windows in a large storage pocket with three beverage holders. One of the widest openings for a door to get into the third row. It's not going to be as wide, but it's still doable. Watch for the rails that come back. You'll want to put your feet between the rails in order to fit a third occupant in the center. Headroom at 36.9 inches, legroom at 30. 0.4 inches. It's not going to be the best in class, but it is doable for two adults if you move over just a touch. The air vent is going to be right here, which if you have a third occupant, it's going to be covered by your leg, two cup holders, USB, and a large window sliding into the center. Again, putting your feet between the rails. That way you can have optimal space, butt and shoulder will be shared. And for headroom, it's going to be a little bit less desirable because it cuts off right into here. 323 horsepower, 26 all electric miles with a total range of 490 miles. Quicker charging than most of the rivals and a savings over Volvo and BMW between 15 and $25,000. So yeah, they may get a little bit quicker in some of the speeds, the savings is definitely here for the Mazda. The interior is a lot more elegant than the CX-9. 
And I like now that we have another variant for a PHEV because for me, I still need to be able to fill up with fuel. There's not enough charging ports in some of the areas that I travel. It is getting better, but that's why I can entertain a plug-in. And at 26 full EV miles, that can get me to some destinations without even touching the fuel at all. Now that's gonna take me to some pros and cons and a lot of the standard amenities is really where it's at here. Heated front seats, standard three climate control settings, 19 inch wheels come standard. I mean, when you start looking at the rival perspective, you will start having to add for some of these amenities, standard driver power seat adjustment, interior is going to be a lot more wide and open than the CX-9. Towing isn't going to be the greatest, 3,500 pounds, so it will be one of the least in class, but it's still more than the Mitsubishi Outlander. Braking on the car, it's doable, but you wanna brake a little bit before than after because stopping 70 to zero is gonna be more around 170 to 180 feet. Some cons about the vehicle is in the cargo, there's really no storage underneath the floor. The second row sits up on a pedestal in which it kind of cuts the feet space. You do still have sufficient amount of space. It just would be nice if they just put rails instead of boxing it in. The center storage here, it's not so deep. It's one of the least. So storage right in the front is going to lack when it compares to a lot of the competition. And I wish it was a one push button to open it up seamlessly instead of a one, two. Non-touch screen, you still have to use the rotary knob. I do like the gear lever. The MI modes, when you're in sport, even in the PHEV, it likes to hover at a higher RPM. Dynamics. Even though it's a PHEV, you still have it underneath here. The steering is gonna be a little bit more heavy which I'm fine with that. And a lot of that's due because you are borrowing components off of the MX-5 to make a better cornering and dynamic drive to the vehicle. Turn radius at a stop point is going to receive right at three lanes. This one's gonna be Just wanted you to hear the engine first. This one will be a little bit more of a turn radius than the gas powered variants. And a lot of that also will be derived because of adding the battery to this and some of the weight that's added. I like how they've cleaned up the dashboard design and they've kind of moved the infotainment screen a little bit closer. Changing the switches for the climate control was also a good choice because it gives that sporty feel which Mazda has always been known for. Going back to the comparison, the Volvo and the Lincoln will have a smaller center display. The gauge cluster will be larger in this than the Volvo and it feels just more wide in the interior for the front occupants. The second row also has quite a bit of room. I do like how they have that little tray that pops out for the cup holders for the center, so that way it just gives you a walkway. Because they're captain seats, you don't necessarily need to put a centerpiece in there with extra storage and this and that. It makes it easier for the third row occupants to stretch out their legs. And if you are considering the CX-9, this is more longer and wider. So interior space in each row is going to be more. You're gonna get about four cubic feet more in cargo capacity because it's the plug-in hybrid. You will lose towing capacity, but you'll get the full EV range. The steering is going to be a little bit more heavier than the CX-9, but the feel to the drive is a lot more dynamic too because this engine is more powerful in which when you go into the two gas variants, whether it's just the standard turbo or the S trim, the big difference there is premium fuel will be used or recommended for the S trim. Otherwise you'll lose 21 horsepower of the 340 horsepower. So something to take in consideration, comparing it to the rivals, this is a bargain deal. 
let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Check out the next video, merchandise, website, Instagram, leave a comment and a like. And I'd like to thank West Shore Mazda for giving us this 2024 Mazda CX-90 PHEV for our car review.